2020 as a year needs no introduction, nor does it need me telling you just how difficult it was to be on the planet Earth during it. And with only a month into the new one, we didn't exactly have the best start to 2021. History and how authoritarian governments treat their citizens could easily spot patterns from last year, but of all things in March when the pandemic quarantine was starting, I booted up a backlogged video game from about two and a half years ago because, you know, I had time. I played a game that got 2020 eerily on the nose. 2018's headliner Novi News from Unbound Creations is an adventure game where you're in charge of picking headlines for news stories with specific spins on the articles. The game has various different endings depending on your choices from those articles, and immediately after your work is published, you walk from day to day seeing what your influence does to the fictional country of Novistan. Now tell me if what I'm about to describe to you sounds even remotely familiar. In the game, there's an election coming up with someone in office who publicly and privately tries to call you out as fake news if you approve articles against them. There's a widespread debate on healthcare reform in a society where quality healthcare isn't available to everyone. Your choices over how you mention those in a minority in relation to the country's problems have a direct impact upon those minorities. And on top of all that of trying to have a uniform message for your newspaper, you have to deal with corporate native advertising. Here, articles that are made to look like news stories about a sponsored new experimental drink called Better Buds. Now, a lot of these themes were very much happening before 2020 and are still happening now, but what's brand new is that in the middle of all this tension in the story, there was amazingly a new infectious disease. And you entering into a new pandemic, the articles and stories you spin have a heavier weight on people's health. You can spin where the virus came from and specifically who is to blame for it, and the game will have consequences for those that you choose to blame. This is a game that got released about two and a half years ago, and it was depressing and almost unbelievable seeing events play out in the game that would happen out in the world for months after I played it. My choices led to more healthcare for everybody, and the hospitals got completely crowded with enormous lines. On my second playthrough, I went against more healthcare, which meant shorter visible lines at the hospital, but dozens of people were outside getting sick. There was an internal office memo at your company about a new hand sanitizer policy with new dispensers being installed, and you can ironically focus on any other issues besides health in the articles that you publish. I got approached by conspiracy theorists who snuck their news on my desk claiming to know who created the epidemic, and when I published it there were protests immediately going with my message. But publishing an article that my newspaper didn't fact check or research make the truth that much murkier. When I drew less favorable articles against the current leader it sparked out outrage and protests in the streets, as well as the leader ranting about my articles like an 8 year old. All this leads to gameplay here and yeah, looks a bit familiar right? Hi, my name is Jakub Kastalski, and I'm the founder and creative director here at Unbound Creations. Jakub is the lead designer and writer for Headliner Novi News, who was kind enough to speak to me about how much his 2018 game had almost Simpsons levels of calling it two and a half years ago. Yeah, it's been a very weird year for that aspect, and I had conversations with my girlfriend where we just remember like, oh look, this thing happened, and then my girlfriend would be like, oh yes, look, another thing you predicted, and I'm like, ah, this is weird. Um, it's definitely a lot of scenarios and ideas in the game meant to be like hyperbolic and exaggerated on purpose, partly because, you know, I'm trying to send a message, partly because it's a game, so it's supposed to be a little bit ridiculous. So watching those things play out in the real world was very bizarre. It kind of almost felt like this was this was meant to be a cautionary tale, not a guideline for this year. It's even weirder than Jakob is saying here, since the idea of the epidemic and how he wrote it into the game was meant to be a hook to talk about several subjects. It was a minor idea that really dug into the healthcare debate that the game was trying to have, but it's eerie to play it now with this billboard being one of the first things you see in the game, complete with the same virus graphic that we've seen in the news almost every day. Yeah, it's just the stock image and that's just what everybody uses. It's like a, like if you Google like image of a virus, you're just gonna get tons of pictures that look exactly like that. What's so fascinating is that the epidemic and how Novistan would deal with that being so relevant two years later was almost completely accidental. And the idea that 
conspiracy theories, having a loud voice and shifting what the narrative was around the virus would be such a big part of these last 12 months. A viral video pandemic spread misinformation about other things amongst wearing a mask being toxic, videos and other conspiracy theories like it got spread on the internet, to the point where even Dr. Anthony Fauci had to comment his frustration over conspiracy theories' influence. How they would actually deal with the epidemic was much more of a launching point to talk about the larger issues in the game. I do think that, honestly, I, something that probably I could have developed a little bit even more in the game, uh, the virus and the pandemic is a little bit of a MacGuffin in the game where it, it kind of gets you the initial, it's the initial hook and it sets up the um, sets up the story to evolve into the different issues that ha happen later, like, you know, the race of the politician, uh, the authority of the politician, um, civil unrest. So it uh, quickly kind of like evolves into that. So in retrospect, it would have been more interesting to also talk a bit more about the impact that virus could have had, like the lockdowns and the masks that we have today that I didn't fully go into. It's an area that isn't as utilized, but definitely the initial few days in the game where, you know, there's like the bit of like fear around it and, you know, the, diff and the different angles you can take it as a media channel where you can, you can scapegoat basically different things on that. You know, you can blame a foreign power for the virus. You can blame it for like a terrorist threat. I think that's similar to what we've seen with, you know, the uh, coronavirus where everybody was trying to, you know, come up with you know, who's at fault? Is it China's fault? You know, or is, are we just unprepared and uh, just tr like constantly shifting narrative around it? It's the biggest theme of the game with how the narrative can be shifted with your influence. So much weight of the nation rests on you picking those articles, and upon multiple playthroughs, you get different endings for yourself and for the people around you. In the game, most people in Novastan are artificially modded, where those who aren't are considered a minority. A co-worker of yours, Evie, an immigrant and unmodded character in the game, can feel a lot safer in the country and get access to medical care if you encourage that in your articles. But if you're hard against immigration and blame a foreign neighbor for the epidemic, you get her and other immigrants driven out of the country. For Jakob, it was a hyperbolic idea to have immigrants driven out of the country until we started seeing ICE in the United States doing just that. It was a story, I forgot, it was, I forgot where it was happening, but I know there was um, an ICE raid where they would go, uh, I think to people's houses to get uh, illegal workers and try to deport them basically. So they were, you know, raiding people's houses. And that's actually one of an ending in the game where you, there's literally, they're just taking immigrants and just deporting them, you know, like mass, you know, uh, raids happening. So that's kind of like one of the potential endings in the game. And then it was happening in real life as well. It was definitely more his historic based. So watching that play out in, um, in real world and like, knowing that like, oh, that was meant to be like a more extreme, like, oh, this is like extreme end of the thing where like people are just being taken out of their houses and just, you know, deported and uh, put in cages, uh, you know, as the, uh, uh, like the border things. So it was just like, oh, that's weird. You know, that's like what a game did is, a, is it's gonna hype, hype everybody, but it's happening now. It was like at the beginning of the year when I was like, oh, that's a parallel that I didn't intend to come true. Jakob did a lot of homework looking into how different news sources worded their articles, but also social media like Reddit to see how the conversation would be handled with regular citizens. When he would get an idea for the story in the game, he would research how the articles spun their story and base a lot of the work on that. The first headliner game, which was almost a beta of Novi News, was heavily based around Kristallnacht, where Novistan slowly turned into a police state against a minority. On my second playthrough, the same thing happened in Headliner Novi News, spreading anti-immigrant sentiments, and the same thing happened in our own news. But one aspect of the game that isn't touched upon as well is the idea of other competing news sources. You'll see the occasional member of society disapprove of your choices, but there's no other news sources offering a counter-narrative or extra conspiracies like the ones you might see on a relative's Facebook. About 90% of the people in the city share whatever view you publish, and there aren't any counter-protests cheering on the leader against your paper. Jakob explains how that didn't play into the game. One idea as I was brainstorming, like, what if we had, like, different news channels you could compete with? But I didn't want to go down that route because I think that would turn it too much into, like, a management game rather than being the narrative that it was. Also, at one point, I had, like, little indicators on uh you actually unlock it after you beat the game as kind of like a new game plus extra feature where like show you like exactly how the different articles will influence the society but again i removed that for the first playthrough because i felt like it was gamifying it a little too much and kind of losing the message 
Jacob has an interest in creating possible sequels to Headliner Novi News, where he can continue to explore media through game design. The idea of different sources and how they would stay within their own internet bubbles will be a different type of video game genre entirely. That's definitely something to keep in mind for um, future projects and some of them is like prototyping, maybe trying to, you know, um, look at the modern scape as like a, a network of, you know, connected like people for different social media and trying to, you know, spread information through that, but also competing with all the other sources of information. I think if I was uh, working on the next headliner, it's something that I would think about a bit more incorporating and making it a bit more modern in that way. Headliner still uses like a traditional news channel as a form of spreading news, just for as kind of a simplification and just because it works mechanically as a, in the game, but it is definitely becoming less and less relevant. And nowadays uh, it's definitely more about people getting information from social networks. So I think the message of the game is still relevant and applicable, but I do think that, you know, maybe the form factor could be updated for the next game. That's a bit more, um, a bit more focused on social media and like the astroturfing and uh, getting stuck in media bubbles. And then maybe then we can have that aspect of competing with other news sources that I think would work a bit better. And a major prevailing theme throughout the game is how it takes a lot of empathy and respect for journalists, but also the importance of their impact. You have instant effects on your society with what's happening in the world, and there are also consequences for yourselves. If you challenge a lot of the ideas behind the president, your boss could be replaced with a government agent and you could lose your job, but you fought to keep the president in check. That too is something Headliner also predicted in 2020 as well, and outside of the United States. A Chinese citizen journalist reporting on the COVID-19 outbreak from Wuhan may not survive after being detained by authorities for the past half year. In late December of last year, Chinese civilian journalist Zhang Zhan was sent to prison for four years for her criticism of China's handling of the pandemic. The New York Times reports how the news is heavily controlled by the state, and Chong traveled to Wuhan in February 2020 to film YouTube videos showing how hospitals drew massive lines and how incomes were affected by the virus. She was abruptly sent to Shanghai and sentenced to four years by the state for the purposefully vague charge of picking quarrels and provoking trouble. In Headliner, I got a similar ending to Zhang, but not nearly as harsh as how she got treated. Another element that Jakob held back on, perhaps out of fear of being too unrealistic in real life, unfortunately becoming less hyperbolic in real life. You also have to deal with the native advertising aspect of modern journalism, where if you publish positive articles about Better Buzz, you're given extra money and a small business becomes a supplier for their drink, but everyone around you becomes sick as you walk through the streets, possibly because of your articles. This is very much a video game where you can't win and you can't come out with everybody being happy. Something the developer recognizes today. Also, it's not always the journalist's fault. It's, there's a lot of other pressures. You know, like even the reason a lot of news is clickbait these days is because that's how they unfortunately have to compete with actual clickbait, So, which is unfortunate. So, you know, definitely like patronize your favorite news sources. With, you know, some of them have monthly subscriptions so we can, you know, still keep independent journalism at a quality level. Stop, think, look at all the sources, wait for all the information to come out before being reactionary. And this respect isn't just for journalists, as the second playthrough unlocks a police officer character trying to solve a crime. She comes approaching you, asking for help in solving it, and maybe using your media influence to help solve the case. Here the officer is an honest cop that's trying to look out for the greater good, and the game touches on how the media can make their jobs both easier and harder to deal with. It's another subject that Jakob did research on, as well as go through the internet. I didn't talk to police officers directly, but what I did is I searched, uh, again, online. So there's actually a few like police-related subreddits where actual police share their stories and uh, talk about their issues. So that's something that I've researched and try to kind of get actual views from people who have worked there in the past or maybe are working there and kind of get their viewpoint. So there are some dialogue lines with the police officers that are directly inspired by um, people's experiences that I read about. I didn't get a chance to interview police directly, but it's something, again, I try to base on actual uh, lived experiences. 
And one irony that's very much a part of the game is that in multiple playthroughs for your different spins, you never really find out the answers for what's causing the epidemic. Whether it be from sci-fi modding of the community, or the immigrants bringing in the virus, whether it's man-made or being caused by the drink, for the game the actual cause of the virus doesn't matter as much as the game examines the idea of spinning a story. Uh, that's something that's been contested and some people had issue with it, but that's a very deliberate design choice because the message of the game is like, it, it doesn't matter what the origin of the virus is, all that matters is what you tell the people. We, we live in an age where it's becoming increasingly more, you know, uh, alternate facts and things like that are becoming increasingly common and difficult to dispel. Jakob worked hard not to be within his own political bubble to examine how a conversation can be driven, not just by citizens, but by media and politicians too. And it's the main lesson the game has to offer. Don't believe everything you read or see, internet or otherwise. News can be biased because humanity itself can be biased. We live in an age where media bubbles have caught off anything of a civil conversation, and Headliner is a word of warning that literally doesn't have finite answers. Jakob does have ideas to continue to explore media through games and possible sequels to Headliner, but in the meantime, his next game has a much, much lighter tone. Uh, we're making Rain on Your Parade, which is a game where you play as a cloud and ruin everybody's day, and it's uh, silly, it's colorful, it's uh, uh, just very random and weird and fun. So that was definitely my much needed break after two headliners and following the news and politics very closely for basically three years. And we actually have a, a level in the game where like the whole goal is just like clean everything. It's basically, you know, there's like, there's a weird section of the internet that's really into like power washing porn, which is just watching power washing videos of like people cleaning decks or like, you know, dirty sofas. And it's, it's something about it is just like oddly comforting watching the super dirty surfaces being like completely cleaned. You know, of all the things I had to research for this video, I never thought that power washing porn would be added to that list. At least here in the United States, we all need a break from the last year, but at the same time, we need that skepticism. Jakob himself put it perfectly. Headliner Novi News is meant to be a cautionary tale and not a guide. And Jakob has mentioned since the game is released, it sparked conversations from classrooms teaching the game and even Twitch streamers playing it and having long conversations with their commenters on their playthroughs about the issues Headliner is presenting. Unbound Creations was able to predict the last year by staying outside of its political bubble, trying to listen to those it didn't necessarily agree with, and most importantly, through history. And while it is crazy to have played a game where the events were happening just through my window, this isn't the fun kind of predicting, like when The Simpsons made a joke about 20th Century Fox becoming part of Disney. People in real life are still suffering a year later. 550,000 people in the United States have died of COVID, and 2.8 million across the world, and counting. The over 120 million people who caught the virus and are alive could have long-lasting effects, including friends and close family of mine. Nothing to say of the jobs that got lost, or the people that got evicted, or how difficult life will be for people after this. Headliner Novi News was an interesting idea in 2018, and now it's a commentary on the power of satire. It's a highly cynical game where on whichever end of the political spectrum you are, there are people who will suffer based on their philosophies. It's cynical towards the future of humanity, and even cynical on how effective its satire is. But after playing it, it is powerful to see Jakob and Unbound Creations pull from history to be even more relevant than they knew they would be. As the world was and still is crumbling around me, it's even therapeutic to play. On one hand, it's a reflection on how history repeats itself and people suffer from learning nothing. At the same time, it's hopeful and has faith in humanity to learn from it. It's the reason the headliner games exist and Jakob didn't just throw his arms up in the air and quit. And even me making this video, I share that cynicism, but also hope that people can learn from its message. And hopefully the only thing Unbound Creations can predict is not needing a hazmat suit for the rest of the decade, but maybe a poncho. Hi, my name is Jakub, and I would like to tell you about our game. <laughs> what the? <laughs> A special thanks to Jakob of Unbound Creations for sitting down and talking to me. His new game, Rain on Your Parade, is one you can wishlist, which is actually launching next week, including going on Xbox Game Pass. And both Headliner games are available for download. If you'd like to be informed of more videos in the future, be sure to subscribe and like and hit the bell and do all that fun social media stuff. The next video will be much lighter in tone than this one for sure. Thanks everyone for watching and stay safe.